Hi there, welcome back. Or welcome, if this is the first time you're joining us. This is chapter 1.2 from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do book by Scott Stevens. Uh, that's me, I'm your speaker here today, Scott Stevens. Um, and we have some thunder going on in the background, so if you hear some thunder, it is, well, it's thunder. <laughs> um, so okay, in this, in this chapter, we're going to talk about sampling, types of sampling, and um, for a little context as we go into these definitions, um, recall that statement from way back in the introduction. The average pineapple plant is 3.47 feet tall. So that was a statistic a student had turned into my class one time. Uh, okay, and so here we go. We talk about census and parameters versus samples and statistics. When you gather data from every member of a population, it's called a census. So if I was somehow able to get the, the height of every single pineapple plant on the planet, that would be a census. I certainly didn't do that. Um, nobody did. Um, but if that was the case, and the average was 3.47, then that 3.47 would be a parameter. If, on the other hand, which is more likely the case, I get data from a um, subgroup of the population, it's called a sample. You know, more than likely, somebody took a sample of you know, 10, 20, 30 pineapples and got the average from that sample. And when you take the sample and get the average from a sample, it's called a statistic. Right. We discussed this a little bit last chapter. So when you talk about a parameter, it comes from a census or a survey of all members of the population. Um, when you talk about a statistic, it actually comes from a sample. Okay. And mostly what we're going to be doing is getting sample data, right? We don't often have uh, population data. You know, they do a census once every 10 years in the U.S., but even that's pretty difficult. They don't reach everybody. Um, and it takes, they do it every 10 years because it's so hard. Um, so usually we have sample data. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about sampling and how to do it well. So we'll start off with uh, random samples, right? And there's two kinds we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a random sample and a simple random sample. In a random sample, everybody has the same chance of being selected. Right, equal chance of being selected. It's a pretty straightforward requirement. In a simple random sample, it's it's a little bit different, and the, and the difference is somewhat subtle. Um, first off, every member has an equal chance, so it is immediately random. So that's required. But in addition to that, every sample of the same size has the same chance of being selected. And what that means is you can't take the population and subgroup it or divide it in any kind of way. It means every sample from that population of a given size has the same probability of being selected. And we'll get into specific examples and recognizing the difference here soon. Um, and a random sample, um, sorry, a simple random sample is always random, right? It starts off with being random, uh, but the, the reverse is not necessarily true. Um, so if it's a simple random sample, it's automatically random. Um, but if it's a random sample, it's not necessarily simple random. So you can have random, but not simple random. Okay, so, so for example, classify each sampling method as simple random, random but not simple random, or neither. All right. Okay, so I have 200 males in my class, 300 females and I need 50 students, right? So I need a sample size 50. If I randomly select 20 males and 30 females, so before I even start this, I break the group into males and females, and I take 20 um, males and 30 females. Well, if you look at this, because there's 200 males, every male has a 20 and 200 shot of being selected. And because there's 300 females, every female has a 30 and 300. So the probability of any person being selected is 20 out of 200 or 30 out of 300. They happen to be the same. Probability is one tenth, right? So it is random, right? But it's not simple random because if you look at this 50, does every sample of size 50 have the same probability of being selected? 
Well, no, there's some that actually have no chance of being selected. For example, a sample of 25 males and 25 females cannot be selected. So it's not the best kind of random, right? The best kind of random says everything has the same probability of happening. But if I say I'm taking 20 males and 30 females, I'm sort of being exclusive about who I'm letting into my sample. There may be good reason. You know, I might want equal representation. And there's certainly good reason to do that. But that immediately excludes simple random. It's, it won't be simple random if you sort of break it up like that. If you put 500 students in a list and randomly select 50 of them, that is simple random. Right? That's what simple random looks like. There's no subgrouping involved. Um, and first, the way you check simple random is first you check for random. Everybody has a 50 and 500, or everybody has a one-tenth chance of being selected. But no group of 50 has an advantage over any other group. Right? If you randomly select 25 males and 25 females, um, it's not simple random because you've sort of subgrouped these things. And it's not even random because if you're a male, you have a 25 out of 200 shot of being selected because there's 200 males. And if you're a female, you have a 25 out of 300. And those probabilities aren't the same. And again, there might be good reason to have a sample that's half male and half female. But as soon as you do that, it is no longer a random sample. Right. So going to the year turn. So I have 30 students. There are five rows of six students each. Right, and I want to select 12 students for a survey. So I have five rows, and we'll say one, two, three, four, five. And each one of these rows has six students. Uh, is that six? One, two, three, four, five. That is not six. That's five. So let me correct that again. One, two, three, four, five. So that gives me six. Those what looks like six slices from five different baguettes. Um, all right, so that gives me 30 students. There are five rows of six students each. I need, I need 12, so I need a sample of size 12. The first case, I put all 30 students' names in a basket and randomly select 12 students. That's the best kind of random. That's simple random. Right, because no group of 12 has any advantage over any other group, and everybody has a 12 out of 30 chance of being selected. So it's random and simple random, which is the best kind. I randomly select two of the five rows and choose all students in each of these rows. So I have these five rows, right? I'm going to randomly select two of them, right? I know some this one and this one, or, or we won't even decide which ones we choose, right? We're going to randomly select two of them. Uh, the problem with this, everybody has a 2 in 5 chance, so the probability for any given person is 2 over 5. So that makes it random, but it's not simple random because not all groups of 12 can be selected, right? For example, I can't get a group of 12 that consists of this person, 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 this person. So there's a group of 12 that is excluded. All right, so as soon as you start doing that, it's not simple random. Um, so in the third one, I randomly select one odd row and one even row and take all students in the chosen rows. That's actually neither, because if you look at these, if you number these rows, one, two, three, four, five, there's two even rows and three odd rows. So if you if you happen to be residing in an even row, you have a one half chance of being selected. And if you're an odd row, you have a one third chance. So it's not even random. And as soon as random is tossed out, simple random is gone too. All right, and there's this, you know that that's a tricky concept, random and simple random. They sound the same, but one's a sort of One's a better kind of random. Simple random is sort of more random. Uh, sampling strategies. So we have a few of these we'll discuss. Systematic is when you take every nth member. Convenience is self-defined. It's convenient. It's easy. Stratified is when you first break up the population into, say, strata. Maybe there's three different strata. And then you randomly select from within each strata. All right. 
And then cluster sampling is when you take the, you know, you take your population, you might grow, break it up into um, groups, you know, a bunch of groups. And then what I do is I randomly select uh, a subgroup uh, or a collection of the groups. And if your group is selected, everyone goes. So it looks sort of like this, all right? So you're break in both cases you're breaking them up, but in one case you're sampling from within each group, and in the other case you're randomly selecting entire groups at a time. So let's look at a couple of examples. You're considering a lunch delivery business, and you want to gather lunch break data, um, and your target population comes from a town that has 20 local businesses. Right, and you need to interview some people about their lunch habits, right? So you randomly select three of the businesses and interview all of the employees from those businesses. So there's 20 businesses, and you randomly select three, right? And so if you work in one of those businesses, the probability of being selected is three out of 20, no matter who you are, right? So everyone has the same probability of being selected, three out of 20. Um, but not all samples have the same probability of being selected. You know, for example, um, whatever size sample you come up with, you can come up with another sample of that size that, you know, comes from, say, five different businesses or seven different businesses. And because you're only collecting groups of three businesses, there's some samples that are excluded. For example, one employee from each of the 20 local businesses. That is, an that is a sample that can never be picked. It's, it's, it's excluded from your options. So that makes it um, not simple random, though it is random. And you get a hundred, so we'll look at this next one, B. You get a hundred um, employees for your survey by randomly selecting 50 employees from labor and 50 employees from management. All right, so you want to sort of get the two different groups. Um, this is a stratified sample, and the strata basically breaking it up into labor and management. And more than likely, it won't be random because uh, if you're taking 50 from labor and 50 from management, in order for everybody to have the same probability of being selected, you need to have the same number of um, employees that are in labor as there are in management. And that just probably isn't the case. So, so my, most likely. Um, it's not even random. So it's stratified, not random. And if it's not random, it is immediately not simple random. Um, okay, so the your turn problem. You want to gather household information from a sample of 10 houses. So I need 10 houses on North Street. And basically the houses uh, numbers start at 1 and end at 100 without missing any house numbers. And we'll assume they start even on one side, odd on the other, which is fairly standard. So on one side we'll have one, three, five, seven, all the way up to um, 199. And on the other side we'll have two, four, six, eight, all the way up to 100. Okay. So two sides of the street. You randomly select five even numbered houses and five odd numbered houses. So, so you get five from this side of the road and five from that. Now, no matter who you are, what household you're in, there's a 5 in 50 chance of being selected because there's 50 on this side, 50 on this side. So 50 odds, 50 evens. Select 5 of each. Everyone has a 5 out of 50 or 1 tenth chance of being selected. So it is random, right? And it is not simple random because there's groups of 10 that are excluded. For example, you can't get house 2, 4, 6, 8. You know, you can't get a you can't get a, a sample of all evens, right? That's that's excluded. Um, and this is a stratified sample by the way because you're breaking up the houses into even and odd, right? Your strata are even and odd. And you're randomly selecting from each side. So stratified, it is random, but it's not simple random. Uh, you take every tenth house starting at number seven, right? 
And so what that does, it's by the way, that's the definition of systematic is every nth house. In this case, it's every tenth house. Um, it is not random. Uh, for example, no even houses will certainly be selected because it'll go 7, 9, 11, or no, 7, 27, 37. Um, and it really is all a matter of that first house that gets picked. Uh, so it's not random, not simple random. It is uh, systematic, um, which is seldom random. Systematic won't really ever turn out to be random. It might be haphazard, but it's, it's not random. You group the houses 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 91 to 100, and you randomly select one of these groups. And so you randomly select one of the groups and get every house in one of the groups. This is, by definition, a cluster sample because you're clustering them in their groups of 10. And if you um, pick one group, if you're in the group that gets picked, everybody in that group winds up in, this, in the sample. So that's a cluster sample. It is random. There's 10 groups. You're grabbing one of them. So everyone on, on, the, on the street has a 1 in 10 chance. So it is random. Uh, but it's not simple random because you've grouped them. As soon as you start grouping, simple random is out. Right? You know, for example, if you need 10 homes, the, 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 um, the sample of, say, number 1, number 11, number 21, number 31, and so on, you can't get it. You know, you're excluding that particular sample. Um, so D, you randomly select 10 numbers between 1 and 100 and select those 10 houses. Notice there's no subgrouping. Right? No subgrouping. And that's good. That gets us going in the simple random direction. Um, so everybody, every house has a 1 in 10 chance of being selected. No group has preference over any other group. Um, so that is actually simple random. You include the first 10 houses where someone answers the door. This is more than likely what you might end up doing. Um, it is a convenient sample because obviously that is the most convenient way to conduct this survey. Um, it's not random. It's, it certainly is haphazard. You know, Don't confuse haphazard with random. Just because you don't know who's going to end up in the survey doesn't mean it's random. Random, you, you do know the probability of everyone being selected, and those probabilities are all the same. Um, and in this, we have no such knowledge. Um, so it's not random, and if it's not random, it's certainly not simple random. So that's the trick. Uh, the trick is um, differentiating between stratified sampling, where you break the population into groups, and then sample within each group and cluster sampling, which is where you break this population into groups and randomly select entire groups. So those two things are similar, uh, but the difference is fairly distinct. And then the other sort of tricky part in this chapter is differentiating between random, where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected, versus simple random, which is even a better kind of random, right? There can't be any subgrouping or categorizing of your uh, sample. You can have no con restrictions on your sample. So those are the two trickiest parts, random versus simple random and um, stratified versus cluster. Aside from that, pretty straightforward. A lot of definitions. I will catch up with you in chapter 1.3.